what's up guys um i'm kind of recording this so after the fact that uh i installed the n55 intercooler more so just because i wanted to make sure that everything was gonna be working properly and that i wasn't just gonna advertise something that ends up failing on me but it's been probably about a solid two weeks now and everything's been good it looks good you can see it in there and um yeah it's been really solid I haven't had any boost leaks really been i'm pretty really been really happy with it iat's dropped a fair amount can't say what i was at exactly i do have an x535d that i may log and i can update that if anybody really wants to know that but i know as of now i live in the hot desert north of los angeles about an hour north and um i typically see about 90 to 100 degree weather right now in the summer and i like stay consistently under i think like 120 to 130 iits on it which i'm not sure if that's probably about the same as just every other intercooler i know before that, i think i was a little bit higher than that and at night typically i'm under 80 like all the time it's been doing a lot good it's a lot better in general just really good and um yeah it's been solid with the couplers so i don't know if you can can't really see it. you can see the intercooler in there though but yeah i'll uh start rolling it of how i did it getting the n55 intercooler to fit deleting the oem couplers or the, at least the seals i should say because now it does have silicone couplers which it costed next to nothing too i bought all the couplers it's freaking raining right now in the daytime <laughs> i don't know if you guys can hear that but um yeah it uh I probably spent, I want to say $33 total on couplers and intercooler. I did get lucky. I got it off of my buddy's car that was totaled. So I, that, that was a lucky chance on mine. I didn't have to spend any money on intercooler. So I only got an intercooler for 40 bucks. But the, the other factor of it too, is that the N5X intercoolers is just a lot more cheaper. I don't know what it is, but for being, for the diesels, they're just more expensive. So getting one for a normal, 335i or just n5x will be cheaper so and be able to retrofit and not have to deal with stupid green and the black seals so that's the only reason it was really beneficial for me just because i came from n5x cars and i just really much more like the silicone coupler just a t-bolt clamp it's just easier you know it works opposed to these seals that are just gonna blow out they're just kind of a band-aid fix so yep uh i'll show the process of how i did it uh, here's the setup. I found some of this online. We have a uh, three inch going on a or a two way down to a two, three going down to 2.75, as well as this is a uh, N5X intercooler that isn't um have like a bead on it. Let me see if I can show you this. Um, I stretch these silicone couplers to over 3.25. Let's see if I can get it off. Yeah, so look, you can fit a you can get them to work over this. You can just get the OEM style mount. I got this off a of buddy for free, so that's why I'm running it. And uh, yeah, it's gonna work. So next step you're gonna wanna do is bring your charge pipe and you're gonna wanna cut off this band right here, get rid of this crap. Then uh, that's where your two inch is gonna come in. It is going to slip over and then it'll be perfect as well as then you also have to take this piece from your red boost hose on a 335D. So I'd straight up just used a razor blade and chopped it. I don't even know where I put the thing right now, but whoops. Um, yeah, you just chop this end off because obviously this goes to your cold set on your turbo. And as well as I have a new O-ring for that just because this is the last O-ring you will be keeping. And uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stretch this one too. I honestly maybe would recommend three. Two and or, or uh, yeah, this is 2.75. I honestly would recommend three. 2.75 seems a little bit tight. I'm gonna stretch it, I guess, same way that I did for this one. You can sure see that it's stretched a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, that's the game plan. And uh, see how it does. This this setup is beneficial because you see everyone run these ATM intercoolers, this and that. But I've seen a lot of people in the forums blow up the boost hoses. So that's not a fix. And uh, this fully eliminates your O-rings. You literally just switch to couplers like any other freaking BMW, which is very useful. I'm also tuned and deleted now. So yeah, I run a little bit more boost, peak around 34 PSI, something like that. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep pushing on this and I'll make an update video of how it's going once it's in. So a new update as well. Just straight up took a grinder to that band. We cut it and then this thing straight up just 
heel off now. Something like that. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand, but you guys get the idea. This is a brief, yeah, there we go. Look at that, just freaking peeled right off. You guys get a brief idea of what I'm trying to do to eliminate all this OEM crap. Oh, wow, that's actually pretty loose. Looks like it's gonna pop right off, but yeah, sweet. That's basically it. So yeah, this is like super freaking loose. Well, my, this is super loose. Look at this, yeah. Once the band's off, yeah, literally slides off like nothing. It literally has like a B, like if it was supposed to be disconnected, you can switch to this normal clamps, but whatever. BMW did one of those permanent ones. So yeah, here I have a sample. This is a 275 VRSF coupler I had from another car. You can pretty much just see stuff slips over, but that's, that's the other idea. And as well as I found the red boost hose to give as a reference, literally just took a razor blade and just cut it. This stuff does not, it's not very hard to cut at all. So that's beneficial as well as, yeah, these O-rings suck. That's the biggest reason why we're doing this, to get rid of those stupid boost leaks and just sim more simple. That's really it, so. So now that I uh, got this side on, this actually fit extremely well. No issues with that side. And yeah, the two slipped right over. That's what it's gonna come out looking like. It's gonna go in this way, so obviously I'll have to rotate that, but yeah, that's the idea. This setup is essentially costing me, intercooler was free, I'm gonna give my buddy uh, my stock because his car got totaled so we just kind of swapped stuff out so i kind of looked out there but you guys can find n5x intercourse for stupid cheap just because there's way more 335s and 335ds so that's something we got to face and um yeah i got the couplers for i think uh 13 bucks a pop on ebay and then t-bolt clamps are like 10 bucks each or not 10 bucks, 10 bucks for pairs so yeah this is a super budget way to do it and not spend freaking 1200 on the stupid wagner or whatever it is the evo 3 so you can even get a bigger intercooler than this. This is a five and a half uh, VRSF, I think. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty reasonably sized. I'm going to still get some gains from it and not have stupid boost leaks. So that's the ideal thing. See, a little bit leak in there. But yeah, this is, uh, this is the idea. It's mainly just to simplify everything and get everything more reliable. Just because these stupid O-rings suck and they blow out a lot. So save a lot more money this way. That's for sure. So quick kind of out of the car take a look at things we got a uh, inner core set up that's what it's gonna be my coupler goes down this everything's pretty snug i will admit like the sizing i can even drop a link in the bio of what uh what i followed of the guy who uh, released all the sizes in a completely different form than any like the bmw diesel forms or just yeah anything else um it was a little bit snug i guess his specs but i also stretched at least down here but right there that was pretty snug to his specs but yeah it's good it's tight i'm gonna go down and tighten everything but yeah you can see it just follows up pretty cleanly and then this this actually was pretty snug to get in but pretty tight just slips in you'll still have room for your clamp and uh i have an oem seal right here just because i had ordered seals to replace mine but then i was like you know what am i doing i'm not replacing these stupid seals they always blow out so yeah just gonna throw a fresh seal in for the turbo side and then everything else is gonna be couplers so sweet and uh, this thing should be operational again. You may you may need to stick it on kind of sideways to fit right here to get the clip to seat, but it is doable. It's kind of a pain, but right there, you see that? And on the intercooler. Okay, so now cool, you made it to the step, you got your pain in the ass coupler on. Just because when they're new, they're just, they don't like to stretch. Now you slip on your T-bolt, and it's going to tighten around it. And then be solid right there. So next, after tightening the clamp down there, yeah, you're going to stick this back on. As well as that one solid. Just like that. All right, she has been test started. Everything buttoned up, we're good. We're gonna throw the E-fan back in and see if uh, there's any lower IATs and uh, just check and see how it's doing. All right, so I'm gonna do some POV driving, kind of show. Um, it's about six o'clock, seven o'clock, um, 90 degrees outside, which is really accurate because Apple said the same thing. So, I mean, the car's reading good. We got Pro Tool open down there. Um, definitely trying to just read and see what I'm doing. We're cruising right now, about 60, showing with the intercore, um, 100 IAT. It's pretty good, just now we're under 100. 
I'm um, pretty sure that was better than before. I'd, again, I'd have to really go drive my X5 because that's still stock and compare it from there. But from what I vaguely remember, yeah, it was a little bit higher. I think I'm seeing above 140, uh, 140, 150 on IIT um, with stock intercooler. And um, again, live north of Los Angeles out here in the desert. So it's going to be hotter where I am. But uh, I can uh, definitely do some pulls and see how it's doing. I know I do still have a boost leak coming from the EGR gasket to the intake manifold, so I'm probably going to be down on a little bit of boost, but I mean, not so much where it's like the car's going to underperform, it's still going to work, just so I can show that I do still have boost from this intercooler. Here's a quick one at idle, sun's kind of beaming, but 97 at idle, it's not too bad. Yeah, I, I honestly, like I said too, I can't really... Um, give a specs down to everything i know that's what some people may want but i yeah again i just i'm not gonna go into that deep when other people have already done all the r d for that so not really my place but my biggest thing was again just showing that a 335 intercooler does work and how to do it just because i was very curious about that and when i searched online like nobody apparently it was curious about that everyone says oh we'll just get the right one just get the right part it's like dude come on like I at least want to do something different let's see i'll do a 40 right here by the way this is in mexico let's see brake boost so we're at a 106 at paid about 30 pounds i think i saw and um that's yeah not too bad pretty sure my, my target usually for is only like a few pounds ahead which is pretty normal um again this is just a stage two race done by dud md i'm on xhp stage three so pretty simple tried and true setup um really solid tune this thing moves it's definitely not a slouch i've given the work to a few cars and um i can for sure say like this isn't just because obviously i installed the intercooler the car does feel better now granted that could be again because i was losing boost from the stupid o-rings or considering the fact that yeah i went to a bigger intercooler but it feels better so i'm completely not disappointed by this mod at all just because i was going to be if anything more mad if i installed this and i'm like oh it didn't actually do anything maybe it just looks cool but yeah no it did help um it's now more simple too for popping it out like those couplers are gonna be cake but yeah i'm i'm super satisfied it's looking good yeah right now like i said around the time it's about to turn seven o'clock still 90 degrees we're at 100 iats um in the desert and uh that's that's pretty solid i mean i couldn't ask for more i'm pretty sure my old uh 135 is used to run hotter than that and it was on a seven and a half inch so pretty good i'm um, really not going to complain about that um overall yeah installation wasn't hard if i had to do it again i'd do it it really wasn't that bad just cruising um i'll definitely do it in the x5 um just because i will say i i took a look under my x5 as well and like the biggest motivation for this is seeing your red boost is just absolutely caked and it's just like dude i just changed the stupid rings like it's just, it's just really annoying i got tired of spending 25 bucks a pop from the dealer on those stupid rings and um this solution was just much easier so worked out um really happy with the solutions and it works that's that's what matters so yep okay so once again this is kind of wrapping up the video um i didn't really show too much how to install it just because like I'm sure if you're going for an intercooler swab, you already kind of have some idea on how to do it. So I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to baby you and just show you everything on how to do it. But the main idea of the video was to show you guys what exactly needs to be done to retrofit an N55 or like an N54 intercooler in. And um, it's really not that hard at all. It completely bolted in just fine. You can see it right there. It took no effort. Literally just use some studs from Home Depot just to make life easier. Slipped it on just through... Um, free runner nuts on it and um yeah that was it took a little bit of manhandling but from what i see that's all the intercoolers on these stupid things so that was basically it it's been yeah like it's been around two and a half weeks now um it's been solid i daily it to work i drive about 25 minutes each way about like 30 miles and it hasn't given issues 
I rip on it. I do pulls on this thing. It's a super solid rig and it's, it's been good. I really can't complain. And like I said, uh, I did notice it's running a little bit cooler, I will say. I mean, I'd, I'd really have to log my X5 here to really show you. If some people really, really want to know that, I can. But the, the regardless is there is gains. And it's, I mean, to be expected. You're going from a small little four inch or whatever the, it is to like a five and a half. So, I mean, it's, it's expected again. And um, the biggest reason I made the video is just because like, I wanted an inter intercooler for this thing. And uh, they're kind of taxed, dude. Like, it's ridiculous. Because I did come from uh, 335s and stuff. And um, I ran it all. I ran eBay on it. I ran a VRSF on one of my cars. I ran an ARM. I, I bought a bunch. And honestly, it literally came down to they all pretty much do the same damn thing. So that's why I was completely not against just pulling what I could get off my friend's car that was totaled. So it was it worked on the end it was free but and that's the reason i'm making it too just because like even if i didn't get that opportunity i could have just went on facebook marketplace and probably bought one for next to nothing so that's just the biggest thing not spending 800 up plus on a stupid intercooler when you can use your resources and then get couplers and make life super easy it's like it's just it's a no-brainer really so that's just the biggest reason why i did this and um yeah again i'm very happy with it and i probably will be doing it on my x5 too maybe figuring out how i can do it i'm not sure if the setup's going to be exactly the same just because i know there are some different sheets with the 335 and the x5 but i'm sure i'll make it work and i can probably document that too just because same thing i see everyone running the wagner and whatever the other brands are on the th x5 35s and um i'm honestly starting to i'm just not sold i really don't think it's that necessary so yep that's going to be wrapping up this video i'll post it and give everyone an update this is the 335d and um yeah, I highly recommend you do this to yours. So.